to the Aspire to Be podcast. I'm Catherine, sales and marketing lead here at Aspire to Be, and today we've got Lewis Ridd joining us. So thanks for coming to see us today, Thank Lewis. Thank you very much for having me. That's all right. So Lewis is um, a footballer for Ipswich Town under 18s and for Wales under 18s. So obviously that's fantastic. It's great news. You Thank know, congratulations. You. Thank you very much. So tell us a little bit how you got into football, then, Lewis. Um, well. I started off, for, I'm from Baglan in Port Talbot, so I started off playing for Baglan um, at an early age, then moved over to Avonlaido, then started getting into the academy system with Cardiff, didn't last too long there, came out with, went back to the Lido, then got into Newport County, okay. um, then made the move over to the Swans, where then I came to Ipswich instead of staying, so... Brilliant. So yeah. I think we've talked a little bit, haven't we, about how big a decision it was for you to make, yeah. to move from Swansea to Ipswich. Yeah. So how did you make such a big decision? What made you choose Ipswich? It was kind of just following my gut and feeling what was best for me. Yeah. So what do I think will benefit me the most? What will give me the most opportunities and what will improve me the most? Yeah. So I felt... What do I, when you look at it this way, what do I do? Go five miles on the road, they'll go 300. And yeah. it was like, right, I have to leave that to the side and think solely on me and what's going to push me further in my career. So it's a big decision to make, isn't it? Yeah. So how old were you when you had to make that decision? Uh, 15. So that's huge, isn't it, to sort of make the decision to move away so far away from yeah. your family and your friends. <laughs> so how did you cope with it? How well, did you manage? It was just kind of. I was in such a adrenaline, adrenaline rush moving up there, it was like, right, I don't have th- time to think about and leave my friends yet. First few days I was like, oh, I'm going to miss it. And as soon as I'm in there, it's like, right, bang, I'm here now, Yeah. can't do anything else, I have to just get on with it. So. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, that was so do you miss miss your family? It must be hard being away from yeah, them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You can't not miss your family, but when I'm up there full time you don't have hardly have a day off so it's like yeah. right, I'm in such a mindset now going forward I have to just be focused on one, what I'm doing each day and not think about that yeah so a real strength of mind as well then I suppose you know it's big decisions to make and then to stick to them as well and, yeah. you know fair play it's yeah, uh, you have to be mentally tough but yeah and you it's don't always think of that, do you? No. With um, with football, you sort of think of the physical side of it. And you don't think of that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. Mm. So talk us through then. What would a normal day be for you? Um, so I probably wake up um, and be in the, at breakfast in the training ground. So I'll be in the training ground for about eight o'clock. Then pre-activation training around ten then come back in, have lunch, and then depending on what type of day it is, if we've had a game the day before, got a game coming up, we'll either do a gym session or rehabilitation or another training session out in the grass, so, and then back, and then we're either travelling away for a game overnight or going home. So quite a busy day then, so it's a yeah. full-time job essentially. Yeah. So do you um, fit time in for studies as well, things yeah, like that? Yeah, so we do have time, the club give us set times to do our education, but also you have to do it, because we are in football so much, you have to do it outside, yeah. of, uh, outside of the set periods of education, because it's a lot to do yeah. when you're not actually going to college. So. Yeah, yeah, it must be hard to manage your time as well. Yeah, but over time you get into the routine and you just get used to it, to be yeah. honest. Do you enjoy the study side of it? Um, <laughs> it's, it is actually quite interesting because it's all about like a professional performer and all the stuff that comes with that. So yeah. some of it's relatable, yeah, I enjoy it. And others it's... Just got to do it. Yeah, yeah. just got to get on with it. So um, in a normal day then, so you're at the training ground for like 8 o'clock, yeah. You leave at late. We'll leave at two, three ish. Oh, that's not so bad. Then. Yeah, so you do this. get your time then. Yeah, yeah, but we could be in the training ground for eight. Leave at one to, on a bus to go yeah. to Wigan or go to 
glamorous. Yeah. <laughs> So where is the, the best place that you've played so far? What's the most memorable sort of ground, uh, sort of match? Probably my last match was at home in the Portman Road against Liverpool. Um, oh, wow. It was on BT Sport, so it was a bit good experience. We did lose, but that's the way it was. But it was such kind of a mark for me to say, right, I've gone through all this year this is the game that yeah. kind of shows me and shows what I'm doing so yeah. yeah oh brilliant and it was also nice being on BT Sport friends and family at home who haven't seen me play for a year or two yeah I bet that was lovely finally actually see me and watch me play football so. did they all tune in as well yeah, did they all yes. watch it yeah yes. I bet my phone was blown up after <laughs> the match and I had to leave it because we lost. So oh, like, <laughs> you're not in the mood for that yeah, then either. Like, no, that's fair just, enough, isn't it? That's <laughs> a side. So what is your favourite part about training and do you like, you know, gym sessions um, or do you like the actual I like just the day to day training. Yeah. But also just love being in around the change rooms, the banter, the boys, the yeah. Walking around and just a year flick off on the boys. It's just <laughs> being around the training ground and yeah. having that connections with people, building new relationships because I come into a group that's been there together for the past ten years. Yeah. So it's gotta be hard. I have to be like, all right, I'm here now fast to get to know everyone. Yeah. So, so it's to do it, yeah. big learning curve I suppose, yeah. isn't it? So not only moving away and having this full time role basically. It's yeah. like integrating into the team as yeah, well. So I didn't know a player before I moved up there, so it was like yeah. again just scary really yeah but it's stuff you have to do it's a line of work that I could be moving from club to club every season yeah I could 20 years time I could have a family and I'm still moving yeah so it's just the way it is and you have to be able to adapt to it so do you have a fallback plan um yes so if I always said if I got released or I'd first try and find a new club, yeah. um, then I'd look down the uni path okay, yeah. of going to America or something like that, because that's always interested me, just going out there, still on a full-time football programme, but also doing education and looking into business, I think I would, yeah. but right now because I'm still young I'm still just looking down that path and yeah, I do definitely. have to look what out there but I just want to look down that path right now so yeah. yeah so if uh, if you had any tips to give any like any youngsters who wanted to get into football yeah. what sort of thing would you tell them um, so I've always been told never go away from the basics okay so if you're talking technically in football now always stick to the basics because that's what the best players do yeah you look at all the best players and they can pass the ball properly they can defend properly they can shoot properly so it's the basics that people get caught up in all these fancy skills and stuff yeah i've always been just told stick to what you know and just be natural in how you play but yeah. also just look for every opportunity and keep working hard just every day but just learn look to learn every day like take advice off as many people as you can make as many connections as you can and just keep going at it every day brilliant it's obviously yeah. working for you as well because you're doing really well at the moment aren't yeah, you? It's so it's going okay so did when you were growing up then did you have like a role model like a football role model um, or Yes, yeah, so I always looked up to one keeper. That yeah. was um, the Barcelona keeper to stay again. Yeah. So he was always kind of my model goalkeeper. But then also one of my dad's very good friends, Martin Langson, he um, was kind of a big part in my football career. So he's the England goalkeeper coach now. Um, and he always just, he taught me them basics. Yeah to stick to them basics 
because as a goalkeeper I'd much rather catch a ball and try and get it up the pitch and then give them another chance to score Yeah. so it was just focus on them and he was kind of the person that implemented that into me and got me the foundations of the goalkeeping so I could build on that yeah. so he was a big part oh lovely yeah. So, obviously, you say you're a keeper. Yeah. What sort of things do you need to practice? Um, I know that sounds stupid, yeah. but, like, in my head, I don't know, do you know, like, those electronic games where you've got, like, yeah. everything really yeah. quickly? so it's just dealing with what you deal with in a game. So, yeah. the types of shots, across, a lot of handling to keep the ball, control, speed, you have to be very fast, but everyone thinks speed, sprinting up and down. I have to be fast across the goal with like different reactive. types of movements and stuff yeah so it's just reactions reflexes and being ready at all times to face the type of shots being powerful also to push up to take a cross or push across to make a save so it's all them type of things so it's quite a high pressure role isn't it being the <laughs> keeper it's like last man standing how well, do you sort of deal with the like pressure like we talk about mental toughness yeah it's I can't let, say I make a mistake, I can't let that affect me because if another one comes, I have to be able to deal with it. Yeah. So, like a defend, um, a mi- midfielder could misplace a pass. It's okay. Yeah. He's got the defenders, the goalkeeper behind it. I miss a shot, it's in the back of the net. Like, yeah. So it's just being able to bounce back and be resilient and always being concentrated also because if you're not concentrated and it's easy to lose concentration as a goalkeeper because you're not always fully engaged in the game as you're not always in the middle of the park making the passes around you kind of the back lines so you have to be constantly talking concentrating so when you can recognize to come down your end and be able to make the saves you need to be yeah so like switching on quickly yeah. I suppose yeah and just yeah. always being switched on so I suppose you can't let yourself sort of slip then yeah that must be quite yeah high yeah, pressure again I've learned to kind of just talk keep talking so I know what's going on rather than just letting it just looking so at so doing like your own commentary so, sort of yeah, thing yeah just I have to be able to be in it the whole time yeah. and tell my defenders there's a striker on your left shoulder or stuff like that, just being always engaged and switched on because otherwise the tempo in the game we play, the ball's in the back of the net the point yeah. of it. So. so what's your most memorable moment then from playing? Um, so I always look, there's different parts of my career that have just been memorable and just stuck in with me. So it would be like something like a tournament at a young age where I first got scouted. Yeah. So it was like, right, I'll never forget that because that's where it started off for me. That's the first step. Yeah. Then it would be um, joining a club, but then there's also like stand up games for me. So my last game in Liverpool I'll never forget it like it's, it was such a big game for me playing against a club the size of Liverpool Yeah, you don't get bigger than that really and coming so close to winning it was a big one for me so yeah that was one of the biggest things in my career so far so what have you been the most proud of then? Um probably my first call up to Wales yeah it was unexpected um so we have a under 18s team and under 23s and first team and my 18s manager has just called me in and said you've had a call up so I'm like oh and he's saying it with the most straight face <laughs> ever and I'm just being told I've been called up to Wales like so I'm like Whoa! <laughs> That's amazing. So I just tried to keep as calm as possible. Yeah, not show any emotions. I've got it, and I rang my parents, and I was just. Oh, yeah, just, what was their reaction? What did they say? Oh, just, we had to let sit there for five minutes and just yeah. let it set. Because <laughs> I've gone to the bus with the boys, and 
he was like, oh, what did Dad to speak about? And I'd been like, well, we should be good at Wales. And they were like, <laughs> all getting hyped. And I'm just sitting there trying to just let it all sink in and yeah. absorb it. So it's a big moment. Yeah, Very I bet that was an incredibly special. Yeah. And what, what were your teammates like? Were they all really supportive? Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's a big thing and they recognise that. Because yeah. they know what football it's all about it's hard to get into your national team so they were all like very supportive because we got a great bunch of bodies who we've had a really strong team this year so it's been really nice to as my first season to come in with them and adapt and they've made it easy for me so it's been really nice oh brilliant yeah so what's next then like what do you want um where do you want to go a new contract yeah yeah so it's the next step is getting a professional contract for me um then getting into the under 23 squad keeping in wales and pushing on to older age groups and just keep pushing and pushing see where i can go brilliant yeah. i'm sure you'll go far i mean at the sound of it you've done really well so far Hopefully. so it's brilliant how exciting yeah. for you yeah so obviously um, you're here today at Aspire to Be yes. because um, Aspire to Be have helped you a little bit on your journey. Yes. So do you want to tell us a bit about how, about yeah, how that so, happened? So um, as a goalkeeper, a lot of equipment's needed. So Aspire to Be have helped me with that and supported me with the top equipment so I can perform on the highest level. So it's been really grateful. Brilliant. So thank so you. Yeah, that's no problem. Keep performing like you are. It's great. So, what sort of equipment are we talking? Like um, goalkeeper gloves. Yeah. Boots. Yeah. Um, that type of stuff is. And how many pairs of like boots and gloves? Um, do you go through I'd the say month? Boots about three times a month. I get a new pair. Um, three. I was gonna have a heart No, <laughs> every, every three months I get a new pair. And then gloves, I get about three pairs. A month because I use them twice a day. And they that's gone madness, out, yeah. and they're not cheap, are they? No. So three pairs a month, that's like a hefty. Yeah. And then a pair of boots every three months as well. Yeah. I bet, like, yeah, I bet all the parents out there who have to buy a kit for their kids are like, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, so that's great then that we can support you and so yeah. keep you going on your on your progress yeah. and um, yeah we'd be proud to be part of your journey so yeah. congratulations really great. And well, thank you no and thank you for being one of our brand ambassadors it's great no so thanks for joining us today it's been really nice to chat with you yes. and best thank of luck you. on your journey thank you very and much i'm sure we'll see really you in your welsh kit really enjoyed thank you great thank you